In this lesson, we'll be taking a look at layers, the canvas, and effects. Let's start by taking a more in-depth look at layers. We've created a few layers here and there throughout this course, but now I want to really explain what layers are and what they can do. Layers live inside of the layers palette, and layers are the individual overlapping elements in your artwork. You can have layers in traditional painting. There could be gesso on the canvas with layers of paint on top of it, glaze on top of that, and then maybe a varnish on top of that. But unlike traditional painting, the layers in digital painting can be moved around. So I have these layers for a yellow ball, a blue ball, and a red ball, as well as a group of layers for this character I like to call Layers Dude. Whoa, whoa, Layers Dude, put your shirt back on. Sorry everyone, Layers Dude hasn't been getting out much lately. Let's go ahead and select this yellow ball layer. And in order to paint on a layer or move it around or interact with it in any way, you have to have it selected. To move a layer around, you can select the Layer Adjuster tool, and I can adjust that layer by moving it around the canvas. If I want to move that yellow ball behind the Layers Dude, then I can drag it down in the Layers palette until it's below Layer Dude's body. Once I release, the yellow ball has gone away from me in three-dimensional space. So the bottom of the Layers palette is the background, or the plane that's farthest away from you as the viewer of the painting, and the top of the Layers palette is the foreground, or what's closest to you. If I were to select the brush tool and start painting right now, that paint is going to appear on whichever layer I have selected. In this case, it's the yellow ball layer. You can click the eyeball next to a layer to show and hide it, and that's a good way to identify what's on that layer. I'll do an undo to remove that stroke. You'll also notice that there's the canvas layer, and at the bottom of every composition is going to be a layer that just says canvas. The name can be a little misleading because you might not be painting on a canvas, you might be painting on paper and you don't even have to use the canvas layer. It really should just be called layer zero or layer one. It's the bottommost layer in your composition. If you don't like painting on layers, you don't have to. You could paint only on the canvas layer on a single layer, and that might feel more like traditional painting. Another way you might use the canvas layer is to enable or disable a transparent background. So if I hide my background, that checkered pattern you see is shown whenever you hide the canvas layer. With the canvas layer hidden, if I were to save this as a format that supports background transparency, then I could print layers dude without a background. If I show the canvas and I print this, then the background is going to be filled in with white. I don't use the canvas layer for anything other than backgrounds, and sometimes I don't even use it at all. We'll go ahead and bring my background back. I'm going to move my ball back up here to the top. When you're working with layers, you'll want to name them because once you get a lot of layers going, you're never going to find what you're looking for if they're just named layer 1, layer 2, layer 3, and so on. You do have a thumbnail which does show you what's on that layer, but you can't really see what's on there if the object is small, so it's best just to give it a descriptive name. If it's an object, just name it what the object is. For example, this is a ball, or if I go into this group, I have the hair layer, the eyes layer, the mouth, the face, the ears, and so on. If you don't know what to call the layer, you could name it by the color of the layer, it doesn't need to be a long or descriptive name. You just need to be able to look at it and know what's on that layer. If I see this says shirt, I know that's the shirt layer. If it just says layer seven, then I'm not gonna know what's on that layer unless I go through and hide the layer. Whoa, layers dude, come on. I'm really sorry, everybody. We talked about this before he came on. And let's take a look at some different ways that we can duplicate layers. Maybe we wanna create more of these balls. One way to do it would be to go to edit, copy, and edit paste or paste in place. That pastes a copy of that ball onto a new layer, and then I could move that around. Another way to do it would be to right-click on the layer and choose Duplicate. This duplicates the layer and retains the layer name. It also duplicates it in the same position, so I can move it over like this. You can also select multiple layers by holding Shift, right-click, and duplicate those. Now I can select all three of those and move them over, and now I've duplicated three balls at once. I'm going to go ahead and delete all of those yellow balls except for one. And the final way to duplicate is to hold Alt on your keyboard and drag with the layer adjuster, and that will create a duplicate once you let go. This is a really fast way to duplicate layers. One of the best things about working with layers is they allow you to edit only part of the artwork rather than having to start over on the whole piece if you make a mistake or you try something that you don't like. For example, if I don't want this yellow ball to be yellow, I could go to Effects, Tonal Control, Adjust Colors, I can make that ball green if I want to. I don't have to go through and repaint the ball. I don't have to paint the background surrounding the ball. I don't have to mess with anything else except the layer name. That's now a green ball. Another cool thing you can do with layers is use them as stencils. For example, with this green ball selected, I'll right click on it 
and choose Select Layer Content. That puts a selection around the contents of that layer. Because the green ball is the only thing I painted on this layer and the background is fully transparent, that's the only thing that's selected. Now if I switch back to my brush, let's say the Smooth Pen, I sample this green color and I make it a bit darker. Now I can add shading to this ball without going on to the background. If I wanted to, I could even create a separate layer and choose a composite method, let's say color. Now if I paint, I can change the color of that ball and give it some stripes, and those stripes are on a separate layer, but that paint remains trapped within that selection. I'm gonna go ahead and revert this. The next thing that we'll look at is the layers menu. The layers menu gives you access to layer commands. We can create a new layer here, but we also have a button for that down in the layers palette, which is easier to access. We can also duplicate layers here, but again, it may be easier just to right click on the layer and choose duplicate. We can lock layers, but again, the lock might be easier. So the layers menu is here. It might give you a good idea of what you can do with layers, but it's much easier to get to these commands in other ways. You can unlock all of your layers if you wanna do that all at once. You can convert a layer that's not a default layer into a default layer here. There's alignment commands to align layers. You can change the order of the layers, but this is all stuff that you can find when you have the layer adjuster tool selected. So I won't go through all of these options because we've either covered them already or I'm gonna talk about them later, but I will take a look at layer attributes. Layer attributes gives you access to the name of the layer, its position, and you can add a note to that layer. For example, if I wanted to remember which brush I used to paint that layer, I could add a note for myself. I could say I use the scratchboard tool, or if I'm collaborating with another person, it might be helpful to communicate ideas. Once you click OK, that information is saved with that layer. Many of the layers menu commands can also be found by right-clicking in the layers menu. There are even shortcuts to flip the layers horizontally and vertically. Now let's discuss collapsing and dropping layers. There are lots of reasons why you might want to take separate layers and fuse them together. You may want to edit all those layers together. For example, I have all of the head layers separate, but if I want, I can go down here to the bottom left of the layers menu, and I can collapse that group. That fuses all of those head layers together into a single layer. Now if I wanted to, I could select something like FX Distorto, and I could change the shape of the head, or I could go to FX Tonal Control Adjust Colors, and I could change the color of the head. If I were to try to do this with all the layers separate, I'd have to apply these effects to each layer individually. Collapsing all the layers together just makes it easier. I could also go to my Blender Brushes, and there's times where I'll make things separate and then I might want to blend them together. I'll show you an example of what I mean. Hey layers dude, it's party time. Thank you. Now I'll just go ahead and merge the head down with the body. And let's say that we wanted to fuse the head with the body. We could blend right in between there and soften that edge. And we could make this look like it's a single layer even though it was once separate. Let's go ahead and revert layers dude. Get them decent again. So that was collapsing layers, which takes selected layers and fuses them together. But what if we want to just merge everything? Down in the bottom left of the layers palette, we can choose drop selected layer to canvas. This will take just one layer and move it down to the canvas. So we'll do that with the yellow ball. We'll have to show the canvas and hide the background in order to be able to see that. And because the ball moved behind layers dude, we'll have to hide layers dude. And you can see it did fuse with the canvas. Let's drop the blue ball down to the canvas and the red ball. I'll go ahead and revert this again. I'll hide the background, and we can also select all of the layers in the composition, and we can drop them all down to the canvas. Now you can see they've all fused together into one single layer. Some of these layer options are new in Corel Painter Essentials 8. I'll revert layers dude again. Most of the time you're gonna be working with default layers, but as we looked at earlier, some specialty layers can be created when you use the text tool. You can see I have a special text layer. Or if I go to File Place, then I will place a special reference layer. Both of these layers can be converted to default layers. I'll go to the Help menu and Welcome, and then Documents. Here we have some document templates which are preset canvases. So for example, if I want an 18 by 24 inch canvas, I'll select that. This automatically creates a canvas that is 18 by 24. If I go to the Help menu, Welcome, and choose A4, then I get an A4 sized canvas layer. I'll open the artwork template called Field. And the last thing we'll look at are a few effects. Let's try Equalize. 
Sometimes this can be useful to balance out the light and dark in your painting. You can click auto set as a starting point, but that's kind of hit or miss. Essentially what you want to do is you want to move these sliders in until you're brightening it however much you want to. The other slider will darken it. Now this will turn blacks that are almost black into black, which kind of eats away at some of the detail in your painting. So you really only need to use this if it's absolutely necessary. Like if you know you need to darken up or lighten things up. Let's go to effects, tonal, adjust colors. Let's reset this and we can reduce the saturation and make this black and white. Another way that we can make our painting black and white is to create a new layer. Set the composite method to colorize and fill it with black. You could also create a new layer, set it to the color composite method, which is a little bit different, and fill that with black. This gives you a slightly different representation. Neither of these examples are very accurate. This one's too light and this one's too dark, but it does give you an idea of the relative values in your painting. And you can see where colors might be too light or too dark. I'll delete these layers. You can also play with adding overlay layers of different types. Let's say this will be an actual overlay composite method, but you could try the other composite methods. It's might select a pinkish color, fill with that, or maybe a greenish color and fill with that. And you can even open your color picker and just hunt around for different colors. And this just gives you a little bit of flavor to your painting. Maybe you want it to look warmer or cooler, and this is a way to do that. If you don't want to fill the whole, you could also select something like the airbrush, digital soft pressure, make a really big brush, and then you could paint in some warmth like this. Then you could select a cool color and paint in some cool shadows over on the opposite side. Now if I show and hide that layer, you can see it adds a little bit of flavor and contrast to the paint. That does it for everything I wanted to show you about the layers, the canvas, and effects. Coming up in the next lesson, we'll take a look at photo painting.